finally get some good music. Nice stuff. Hey, we are closing out today our series uh, called Retro, taking an old-fashioned look at some relationship things, and it's been quite a journey the last four weeks, and we, we're closing off today. And uh, the whole series has kind of been about, uh, mostly for singles, uh, but married couples have uh, appreciated it as well. Uh, but it's basically, be, uh, the whole thing is, uh, instead of finding Mr. Right, finding Mrs. Right, I, we're trying to do our best to, to be the person that the person we're looking for is going to be looking for. So that when we find that person, they're also looking for somebody. And, uh, and we put ourselves in the place where we didn't, be, we didn't find Mr. Right. We, we just became that person. So um, many, many of you singles probably have already written off marriage. You, you uh, watch your parents go through some messy stuff. Uh, and you thought, I don't, I don't want to do that. And um, uh, you watch your friends get married, have a big party. And then within two years, they haven't even got it paid for, but they're done. And it's over, and uh, it's a mess, and you're just like, uh, let's just not do that. Let's just live together or something. Let's, but uh, I don't want to make a commitment like that and have a tr- trouble. Uh, but but uh, we truly believe that marriage is an incredible thing. In fact, it's, it's the most important decision, uh, earthly relationship that we have. And so it's a big deal, and we want to take it seriously. We truly believe in marriage. I think that God does as well, and He designed it and created it and gives it to us. And so today, I want to talk about some bridges that we need to build into our lives. That while we're dating, and even if once maybe maybe we're 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 not doing that anymore, uh, we're married. Uh, that that we would we would build these things into our lives in our marriages to make them strong, because we're all going to face some tough times. And there's going to, we're going to need some bridges uh, uh, there. So so last week we took talked about. Finding the love of our lives, right? And uh, kind of interesting, uh, today I got a, a tweet from a, uh, somebody that comes to church here, and it, all it said was, I said yes. I said yes. So somebody still believes in getting married. And uh, so we're pretty cool about that. So in spite of the, in spite of the three sermons that I did before this, uh, they're like, okay, yeah, let's do it. All right. So, okay, the first bridge is the bridge of dating. Write that down, dating. Uh, I want to encourage you to keep dating. Even if you're still dating, you need to keep dating. It's got to be more than just like, um, uh, you want to watch Chop together or something. You got way more than that. So to love that person, in fact, I would say, here's, a key, here's one of the keys to, to a loving, lasting relationship is, con- is to love the person like you did when you first fell in love. Do the things that you did when you first fell fell in love. Uh, to be that couple that holds hands and walks around the lake and has long time depth commitment to each other. Most of us would like a relationship like that. It's supposed to be that way, that God designed us in, in such a way to, that, that we have a huge capacity to love and to express it. Matthew 19, 4 through 6. Haven't you read the scriptures? Which is what he was saying is like he was implying, yeah, I mean, these guys, when he says this, these guys have memorized this whole thing, so they know it. And so he's just kind of reinforced it. He says, uh, the record that from the beginning God made them male and female, and he said, this explains while a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one, since they are no longer two but one, let no one split apart what God has joined together. Now maybe, maybe I don't know if you've ever done this or had this. Like, if you got kids, maybe in, you know they're in the grade school thing, and they're and they have these programs that they do, like they sing and stuff. And your kids been singing the songs, and they've been doing the dances, and got all the hand motions and stuff. And you know that your kid is ready, you know. It, and and you're thinking, oh, this is it. I mean, my kid's gonna shine. And, and uh, uh, Mickey Mouse Club, here we come. And you're seeing dollar signs like bing, 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 bing. I'm getting on the voice. I'm doing all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to be great. And so then you show up and you tell, I mean, the grandparents are there. Uh, you got the video cameras going and the music starts and there is nothing from your kid. Everybody else is doing it. Everybody else is your kid's like, <laughs> and you're just like, what's going on? And afterwards you get done, it's like, what happened? It's like, I don't know. And it's like, didn't you, did you forget the words? No. Did you forget the hand motions? No. Then why didn't you do that? And you know what they're going to say. I didn't want to. <laughs> didn't want to. How many of us, when it comes to dating, 
uh, especially after we get married, is that kind of attitude. Well, I don't want to anymore. I don't have to because I'm married. I don't have to do that. I don't have to show that kind of thing. Uh, some of you may be thinking, well, I married the wrong person then. And I need to go find Mr. Right because obviously that's not Mr. Right or else we'd still be, right? And so I'm on the lookout for somebody else who will show me that kind of affection and attention. And we know that that doesn't work. You see, at one point in your life, you fell in love with each other. And there were things that you did that kind of made that thing happen. Perhaps the best thing you could do is recall what that was like and make a commitment to date one another. Little honeymoons that you get to be able to spend with each other where you make time for each other, dating each other. Don't take each other for granted. That's what dating is. It's not taking each other for granted. It'll build a bridge that will help you out over some troubled waters that will be ahead. A lot of people think that marriage is boring and dating is fun. Because if you see a couple and they're, maybe they're, you know, they're walking along and they're holding hands, what's your first thought? Oh, they must be dating. You never think, oh, they must be married. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 9.9. 9. Live happily with the woman you love through all the meaningless, I think that's funny, days of your life. <laughs> so this is what it's come to. But, you know, for the most part, our lives are kind of that way. There's not... It's not super, like, it's, it's just kind of, and, you know, that's kind of how we like it, though, right? And if I can live happily with my wife just through the everyday, every kind of day life, that's awesome. I like this. The wife God gives you as your reward for all your earthly toil. <laughs> There's lots of implications there. I can't say that stuff, but, you know. This is my reward. Yeah. <laughs> so you got to get your head around that. Well, uh, okay, well, how am I going to treat her, treat her, him, right, as a reward? Dating does that. So you find yourself being able to continue to think creatively. That's the problem with dating. It think, it's it's, it's got to be creative. It takes effort and work. And, and, uh, but boy, I, I know for Linda and I, we've made a commitment to doing that. We do real well with that now. It's just, uh, you know, I, I heard guys talk about, like, hey, once a week. And I was like, once a week? Uh, when you have little kids, all that kind of stuff, and you can't afford to even get McDonald's anymore, you know, it's just like, how do you do this? And so we try to make a commitment, well, hey, at least every other uh, if we can do a once a month kind of deal where it's just get you know the kids and get a sitter and do all that kind of, try to trade off, all that kind of stuff is, is possible, sp certainly when you're young. So make a commitment. Uh, if you're dating right now, make a commitment to continue to date each other. Second bridge is to make a commitment to serve each other. Romans 12.10 says, love each other with genuine affection, which again implies what? That there is some affection that is not so genuine. And we'll kind of get into that a little bit. But love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. One of the best ways we can honor one another is to serve each other. Jesus came to serve. He came to serve. And yet we would rather be served than to serve. Service reflects maturity. The more mature I am, the more willing I am to serve. The more immature that I am, the more willing I want somebody to notice me and to serve me. And that, that applies in all areas of our life, not just relationships. You know the people that you work with uh, who are immature, who always want other people to do their job. And not to go an extra mile to do any extra stuff. Philippians 2. Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another and working together with one mind and purpose. Now, if you're like me, and, and I'm guessing some of you are, but if you were to look deep in, in my life and my heart, you would see a selfish person. I know that might surprise you, but, but that's true. And you can ask my closest friends. I have a battle that's there, and it's, uh, it shows up ever so often. I don't really like it about me. I mean, do you ever, do you ever, um, 
like at my house, like, uh, you know, I have something to eat, and I go to put it in the dishwasher, and the dishwasher's full, and at that moment, you have a dilemma <laughs> about what to do, right? <laughs> Serving one another is usually in that moment, right? Now, honestly, I've kind of, I've moved forward in that world, but I still, when I unload the dishwasher, I want somebody to notice. A little clanging of the stuff, clang, clang, clang. I'm serving you. <laughs> or, you know, oftentimes on my day off, I, I will vacuum. I like to vacuum and do a little dusting and clean the floors, things like that, trash duty. But honestly, again, I expect somebody to notice quickly, <laughs> like within the first steps into the house. Notice anything? <laughs> I don't know if you can relate to that, guys. If you have a pulse, probably can. Gals, in the dating world, if, if he is not serving you now, what makes you think he'll serve you later? Again, this is all about becoming the person that the person I'm looking for is looking for. Guys, if, if it's all about her all the time, she doesn't serve you, hmm, what makes you think that after, right? <clears throat> Oftentimes in the little things. Now, there are some big things, guys, for women that we, we need to pay attention to. Affection is a big deal. Hugging, not groping. Um, <laughs> big deal. Conversation, not grunting. Big deal. Being honest. Gals we, gals, we have needs too. Now, I cleared this up first. You know, the second session was about sex isn't a need. So here's the needs, uh, gals, you need to know what is it we men need. Oxygen is helpful. Yes. Okay. ESPN, second big need. Third, remote. Don't mess with that stuff, all right? When you are a servant, you do not have any rights, right? When, 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 when there were slaves and stuff, they didn't have any rights and didn't give us like, and you're just like, well, hey, we, we move way past that. Except for the fact that Jesus and I came to, to serve. And so if Jesus came to serve, I'm supposed to be serving. Marriage isn't about rights. I tell couples that all the time. When you get married, you're going to give up that right, right? There's a whole lot of stuff we say, no, and, and what do we get in return? Well, I get her. I get him. So I'm giving up my right to demand my own way. So just try this. Offer this. Honey, I know it's your week to, to drive the kids to school, but I would be glad to do it. That's it. I'd be glad to do it. Without an agenda. Hey, honey, if I drive the kids to school today, can I go golfing afterwards? That's not serving. That's self-serving. telling you. I'm telling you, here, if you do not get these two bridges done right, the bridges of dating and the bridges of serving, here's what's going to happen. You will move from romance to routine to roommate. Romance, routine, roommate. If you don't learn to date and you don't learn to serve each other before you get married, because it's going to be really difficult after to get that in your head. Last bridge, a strong relationship with God is essential, essential. When there's troubled waters all over the place, when we're going through difficult and dark times, when, when, when it's just difficult, we need God in our lives. It's a big deal. Everything else, everything else will be a struggle if we do not get this number one thing done. God does not want our relationship with our boyfriend to be the number one relationship in our lives. God does not want... And this will really bother some of you. God does not want, when you get married, you have kids. God does not want your relationship with your kids to be the number one priority in your life. He doesn't. He wants to be number one. 
Now, I know that will bother a lot of kids in the room here because they think, no, wait, 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 don't mess with my life. But if mom and dad are making you number one, it'll make you um, because here's what's happened. If they make you number one, you're going to want to marry a guy or a gal that will make you that way. And um, eventually everybody, you know, and what if you put two people like that in the same, right? When the world revolves around, right? So be careful with that. I believe that our, to, to, to live to our fullest potential in relationship depends on us both working in a relationship, in a relationship with God. First John 1 John 1.7 says, But if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Because we're going to be cleansed from all sin when, in, in marriages. I don't know if you know this, but um, you're going to sin when you get married. There's going to be problems. You're going to be selfish. You're going to say stuff. You're going to, right? And you're going to need Jesus to forgive you, but you're also going to need your spouse to forgive you. And a lot of the times, the only reason I can muster up enough courage to do that is because I've got Jesus in my life. I mean, I take Jesus out of my life. I'm going to be a very unforgiving person at times. I'm going to hold it against her. She's going to hold it against me. She's going to keep score. I'm, and I'm going to lose every time. That's why the Bible says, love keeps no record of wrong. Love doesn't keep score. I remember when, I remember when, I remember when. It's over, right? It's over. Without forgiveness, it's over because we can't, right? We can't do it. That's why I need God in my life. Now, I'm not suggesting that if, you're a, if your boyfriend or girlfriend is not a believer and you guys get married that you can't have a, a, a good marriage. I know better than that. But I am saying that a Christ-centered relationship is going to be stronger. Here's why. Look at Ecclesiastes 4. A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated Two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better. For a triple braided cord is not easily broken. So when you get one plus one plus one, it's tough to break that cord. It's super strong there. Now, this is way more than just attending church together occasionally. Uh, It's not about being religious, but it is about developing a relationship with God. You know why this is so important? Because I am not tender enough to meet my wife's needs all the time. I am certainly not smart enough to see into the future all the situations that we're going to face and be able to get through them myself. If I rely on my smarts and my strength and my willingness to forgive at the best, eventually, probably, it's just going to be numb. As a Christian, I have the power of God in my life. I have the... As a Christian, I have the power of God in my life. I have the wisdom of God in my life. And I have the love of God in my life. All three of those things. I need his power, I need his love, and I need his wisdom in my life if I'm going to be a good husband. So how do we do this? I'm just going to give you a couple super easy, practical ways. If, as you're dating, you can start doing these things. Pray together out loud. Sure. I think, I think when, we, when you pray together, you be, and I know this might freak some of you out because you just think, oh, all I know is uh, now I lay me down to sleep. And that's, that's not really usually good at, unless you're going to sleep and you're dating. So let's not, right? Um, so uh, you begin to pray with each other out loud. And a good place to start that is at a mealtime. That's fine. Just, just pray. Just pray. And I know, I know that's bothersome to some folks, um, but just start. And, and here's, what, here's what's really good about it. You can hold hands, right? Just hold hands. Now, in a Bible college, that was really kind of your first dating experience. Let's, let's pray. <laughs> and then you found out who was going with each other when they went, I'm totally serious, though, about this. I do think it's important for us to pray because when we pray and talk to God, what's on our heart 
intimacy is also established with him and with the person I love. When I know what, I, if I want to know what's on Linda's heart, I listen to her when she's praying. It's, it's a good, good thing to do. Go to a Bible study together. You start doing this while you're dating. I think, it's, I think it's a wonderful thing to do because you have great friends. You begin to establish good friends who come into your life and help you and guide you and work with you, um, who are going to encourage you, who are going to simply be there. I think one of the best things you can do for uh, uh, your dating life is to, to, to go to a small group. First of all, it kind of solves the problem, what you're going to do on Tuesday night. It just takes all the pressure off. Hey, a oh, small group night. And you go, oh, good, I don't have to think of anything. Okay, okay. And so you just go there. And then it gives you something to talk about. Hey, what'd you think? Uh, you know, because the next time when you get together and you're like, you know, hey, I've really been trying to think. Th and you begin to talk it out. And you just, it, it, again, I think it begins to take the pressure off in a dating relationship in, in, in some really good ways. And you begin to build into each other's lives the things of God. Again, I think it's super important for you, if you're married, to pray together and to attend a Bible study together. Uh, and maybe, it's like, and, and maybe, maybe the best thing you can do right now for your marriage is just to say, I think we need to pray with each other. Um, I'm willing to start and just do that. And then we, we need to go to a Bible study. We've been putting that off, we've been putting that off, putting that off, and we need to find a way to do that. It'll help you. It'll, I guarantee it'll bring you closer. It'll get you on the same page. It really will. It's a win-win thing. Now, let me ask you something. If you choose to ignore this message today, what do you think will happen to your marriage? If you say, you know what? I'm not going to build the bridge of dating in my marriage. I'm not going to build that into, in a relationship. I'm, not, I'm, just, I'm good. What do you think will happen? Or if you say, you know, I'm, I'm not serving her. I expect, right? If nothing changes, if you do not move forward on the whole serving thing, what do you think will happen? If you don't move deeper in your relationship with Christ than you are now, where is it going to be? In? This whole series about not finding Mr. Right, not finding Mrs. Right, but simply being that. Being the person that the person you are looking for is looking for. To be yourself. See, when you first start out dating, you're really not yourself. You're trying to impress. Hey, I got a job. You want to go out? You know, that, okay, that's cool. Uh, that may even be a lie. I don't, you know, but, you know, you're trying to impress. You're trying to, and that's, you know, but then eventually, eventually, what will happen, if it, if, if it is to move forward, eventually you will just be yourself. And that, that in that moment is the scary part. Will she like me now? Once she finds out who I am. That's super scary. But I really think that as a Christ follower, I am becoming like Jesus in my attitude my action. And as a result of that, I can be myself, and as goofy, as weird, or strange, or bizarre, or as quirky as I am. And when somebody still loves me, ha-ha, there's nothing like that, right? I really believe that, um, when, that, that marriage is an incredible thing that God has given to us. We want you to be successful. We truly believe that with God's help and his strength and his wisdom and power, he'll set you up for a love that's going to last a lifetime. All right. Father God, we thank you so much for the last several weeks as we've been able to navigate through some pretty um, tough subjects. We're taking a look at your word and, and been convicted by your spirit for some of us, we've, uh, we haven't really liked what we've seen and heard in our lives. And so here today, perhaps we start over and begin to trust you. For some of us in this room, uh, we're in, uh, there is no bridge over troubled waters. We're neck deep in it. And um, we don't need a bridge. We need a lifesaver that would come out and rescue us from this. 
And if we don't get something today, it's quite possible that tomorrow it's all over. And so before somebody throws it in and says, I quit, that I would just pray that, uh, that here and now um, we make a commitment to each other and to you to, 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 to hold on and let you save us. You know, for some of us, we're, we're wondering if we, if we did the right thing or we should have, could have done something else. But uh, here's our situation. And Lord, for some of us, we really, really, really need you to rescue. But Lord, some of us are uh, super thrilled with uh, the way things are going in our relationship. We're more in love now than ever before. By your grace, we pray that that will continue. In Jesus' name.